Okay, let's take a look on my solution. Well, in my lambda function, I'm taking three parameters. So let me highlight my lambda function for now. So, well, uh, in this lambda function, I'm taking the d for the diameter, and then the s for the number of the slice, and c for how many pieces the whole piece was cut into. Okay, so first I want to get the total size of the whole piece and then divide it by C, that is how many pieces the whole piece were cut into, and then multiply it by S, that is how many pieces, how many slides each professor grabbed into his plate. Okay, so and then well, uh, I'm uh, and then well, I'm I'm sending three sequences. There are the diameters and the slice and the cut. Okay, and then I'm gonna get this part. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So the next one is a filter function. That is another scenario that we can find a lambda function to be really useful. Uh, for the filter, as the name suggests, we are trying to use some criteria to filter out some of the some of the items from a sequence okay and the the rule is the syntax is well we want to use the filter and then we are taking two parameters for uh, the first one is a function that will be our lambda function and the second one will be a sequence so we are using the function oh sorry we are using this function to test whether each of the member in the given sequence should be kept or not. So we are giving a true or false decision for each of the member in the sequence. So what does this suggest? This suggests that for our function, it has to give us a true or false value, right? Say so, uh, if, you, if you have this list and then we want to do a lambda function to, few, uh, to only keep the, uh, the members, uh, well, the members that uh, which have a length to be six or higher. Well, of course, we can do that in a different way because we are simply visiting a list of the strings. However, if you want to do a lambda function, the lambda function will tell you only one thing, whether the length of a specific string is higher than 6, which is a true, or not higher than 6, which is a false. Right? So for this lambda function, it's going to be super easy if we just take a string s, and then we want to check whether the length of the uh, the length of the string is higher than six. If it is higher than six, we are doing a true, otherwise a false. Okay, and then we want to apply this uh, this function in the filter function, so that we can use this lambda function to filter out the ones which give us false. So we only keep the items that give us the truth. Okay, so well again, if you want to uh, do a filter and then if you want to print the results, well, it, it is really a a filter, a filtered sequence. But if you want to cast that into a list, and then you will be able to see the results. Okay, so let's move on, and I have two exercises for you. The first one will be an easy one. Well, we have a sequence of the numbers, and then I want to use a lambda function to uh, to get the odd numbers from this list. So if that's an odd number, that is a true for the lambda function. And then otherwise it's going to be a false from the lambda function. Okay, so that will be an easy one. And then the second one will be a little bit harder, and that is we have a, a, a review data set. So for each of the review, and then we have the user's name, and then uh, the, the, uh, the title of the review. After that, we have the, the number of the, uh, the vote sum up and then the number of the votes for the sum down. Okay, and then I want to, for each of the review, I want to visit them and now I'm interested that I'm, I want to grab all the reviews that received more unhelpful votes than the helpful votes. Okay, so try to fi uh, finish this lambda function and try so that I can do this filtering. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna continue recording this video, but I suggest you to pause your video so you can work on your coding. And I'm gonna show my answers in next five seconds. Uh, well, after five seconds. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
Okay, here. Well, the first question we want to we want to only keep the odd numbers. So how if you have one number, how do you check if it is an odd number? Well, we can do this. If you grab that number and then if we check that value most two gives you a one and then that's an odd number, right? And then I want to create a lambda function like this. For a given value n, I'm going to use n most two and check if we got a one if we got a one that is an odd value so that is sum up so that is a true right and then i want to apply this filter the first member should be the lambda function and the second one should be the sequence of the integer values okay so this is for the first question and for the second question well uh uh this is going to be harder because well remember when we are sending each of the item from the reviews to the filter function, what is each of the value? For each of the value, it should be this one. So this part will be considered as one item we want to send into the filter function, and then we want to apply the lambda function to check if we receive a true or a false okay so i'm gonna say for an item an item will be one line of this review data set and then i want to grab those two values how can i grab those two values so that will, this is the index two and then the first one that is index two zero so this part is the number of the helpful words and Similarly, for this part, that is the index 2 and 1, and that is the number of the unhelpful votes. And I want to compare those two values, and if the number of the unhelpful votes is greater than the number of the helpful votes, and then that is the value I'm keeping. So how do I keep that? I want to make sure that this lambda gives me a true right and then after applying this lambda function to the filter and then we only keep one thing which is this part okay well this is another scenario that we will find the lambda function to be very useful and then let's move on and talk about another one the next one will be the reduce so for the reduce well we are trying to the process will be we have a function this function takes two arguments and then this uh, this item this function only returns one and when we are reducing a sequence the process will be we grab the first two value s1 and s2 and then we want to send the s1 s2 to the lambda function and then remember we only have one value back right now i want to take out the s1 and s2 and then i'm plugging the return value from the lambda function so what happened and in this case well you will see s1 and s2 will be taken out and then we are plugging in only one value so what happened what happened is the number of the total items in the list will down by one right so we are reducing the size of the list down by one but we are not finished yet so s1 and s2 will be gone and then well they're uh, replace, replacing them there will be one new value and that is the function with the s1 and s2 as uh, as it's the return value and then i want to grab the first two values again so what are the first two values? So the return value of the function with s1 and s2 as argument. Now, that is only one value here. And I also want to grab s3. So after that, after I have another return value, I want to take those two values out and plug in one value. So in the next round, the length of the list will be reduced by one again that's the reason that we are calling this reduce because we are constant constantly grabbing the first two value and then send them to a function and eventually we only plug in one value back so we are reducing the size of the list and eventually at the very end what is going to happen we will only have one remaining value 
right? Okay, so let's see a very, very easy case. Well, if we have the lambda function x and y, we take two values and then we are returning the x plus y. Okay, and then uh, we want to you reduce using the, this lambda function as the first parameter and then we want to reduce this list. So what will happen? Okay, well in the first round, well we are going to have this one. And well uh, in the first round we are going to grab those two values and we take them out from the list and then add them together and plug in only one value back. Well and then we are going to have uh, 58 which is the sum of the first two values and then 42 and then 13. Right. So in the first round, we grab those two values, uh, the first two values, send them to a lambda function. The lambda function will add them together and return them, return the sum. So I got the 58. So the first two values taken out and 58 add in. OK, and how about the next round? The next round, we are going to take those first two values, send to a lambda function. The lambda function will add them together and give me the sum. So the first two values will be replaced by one value, which is 100, and then we have 13, right? And eventually, this is the last step. We just add those two values together, and then we return that, and then we got 113. OK, so this is the process of doing the reduce. And let's see uh, my exercise. So for this exercise, I have a sequence of the strings. And what I want to do is I want to connect all the strings together. And between each string, each pair of the strings, I want to add three dollar signs. So go ahead and try to finish this part of the code. And eventually, you should be able to get this. OK, and then let's do another one. So for the next one, we are loading the Twitter data again. And I want to do a filter so I only have the retweeted data, retweeted tweets. OK, and then if you want to scroll to the right side, and you will see this part. This is the text, right? And if the text, well, starts with the RT, and this means, let's say, retweet. OK, well, we want to do a filter and only keep the uh, keep the tweets which are retweeted. OK, so go ahead and also finish this uh, this uh, uh, this exercise and I will show you my solutions in the next video.